Well, these are brittle stars, Ophiuroids. Um, they're from the upper Kimmage clay. And you see there's quite a few on the slab. Um, they're all sort of balled together. So you imagine this is really quite a deep sea. And these things have sort of died and drift, just gentle currents has actually drifted them into a little concentration. And at the same, and they're, they're really, uh, no one's yet described these things. We find very, very similar sized ones from Sonoff and limestone from Bavaria. They're very, very similar. And whether they're the same, no one's really compared these things. And these range through quite a way in the upper Kimmage clay, but at certain levels they're concentrated and they're better preserved like they are from this, this level. And at the same level as we find these, we find... These, these are very, very small microcrinoids. And when you study these things, they normally attach themselves to floating objects or they're fixed to the sort of sea floor. Now, we've, we've got the, the head of one here. We've got the stalk of one here with all, actually with the very, very small tendrils coming off. And you'll see, you'll see some closer detail. They're very, very fine. And on the end of them, are these little tiny like hooks. They look like little theropod claws. On the ends of the, each little branch and stem, um, there's, there's hooks. And someone sort of studied these things and said, well, microcrinoids. The reason they're micro is the fact that actually they're low oxygen levels in the Kimmeridge clay is like a bonsai crinoid. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't really know. But certainly they're very, very uncommon. Um, in the lower Kimmeridge clay, we get some from the what we call the pentacrinus bed from the lower Kimmeridge clay. We do get some bigger columnals and segments of that um, from that sort of level. But again, they're not common in the Kimmeridge. They're really not. But the, the specimens you've got in the collection are the best preserved as yet. And what we've done, we've used a, an air bracer to actually reveal this. And it, and it does take a long, long time. This took a whole nearly a whole day to reveal these little side tendrils, which we, before, you couldn't really sort of see. And it's only through cleaning very, very delicately you can see the, this level of detail. So the hunt is on to find more. We've got a lot more of it, but it's getting that preservation with these side tendrils to, to show that. And certainly we've only got two heads of the sort of crinoids. Now, and the, really the question is, were they attached to like the algal mat on the seafloor or were they attached to floating objects but they're found at the same levels as those ophioroids and um, but again no one's really looked at that sort of um, association so were these attached to seaweed were they attached to the seafloor we don't know so there's a lot more work to be done on them that's all we've got for you today from the etches collection thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe for more and hopefully we'll see you next time